Hello, 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 and welcome to Not a Safe Podcast, Not a Safe Space Podcast. This is Sabrina. And Tabby. Hey, not too bad for somebody who's riled up and in a pissed off mood. No, not bad at all. What the hell is going on, girl? Why are you so angry? All right, so we're, let's just jump into this. I have my new podcast space, right, in my office in this corner. Mm-hmm. I have a new laptop. I got our fancy new microphones. I have uh, my earphones. And I don't want people to touch my shit. Who's so touching I, your shit? My, well, according to the text, nobody. Because nobody knows where my stuff went. My earphones were missing today. My microphone charger was missing today. Now, oh, I did uh, find this. Who in your house is going to steal your, what the hell is that? This is the little rubber part to my earphones. So th- not only does that mean my earphones are missing, it means it's fucking broken. <gasps> no, they didn't. Yeah. yeah. I'm like Angela Lansbury, like a detective <sighs> searching everybody's room because I swear either Lorelai or Nate or Ethan broke it and now they've hidden it and thrown it away because they're scared of the wrath. I don't know why they'd be scared of me. Really? But- you don't know why your children would be scared of you. Right. You, they went into your sacred space, broke it. your sacred things that they didn't even need to begin with, and you wonder why they're scared of you? I hate I hate it. There's it's literally the worst way to make me mad because uh, my 9 to 5, I work from home and this is my space and don't touch it. And there are times when I come and somebody, especially when Ethan was in high school, so then he's doing his homework in here. And there's stuff all over my desk and my stuff has been moved and you can't do that. I can't miss anything in work. It impacts and it snowballs and it's a dangerous issue besides just my own sanity. Well, that of course. And then to, to be able to sit down and be prepared for a podcast and be professional at all times when it's outside of my control drives me bananas. I bet it does. So to me, I always make these jokes about the fact that I have the worst uh, roommates ever. Well, yeah, they're children. Yeah, so- well, including my husband, and I can't kick them out. That's the bad part. You can't kick them out, and they don't pay rent. Right, and then normally in it, like, they're the kind of roommates that eat all your food. Like, they eat your leftovers. Mm-hmm. Or they eat the food that you have destined for something else. Or, for example, I I went to my son's room the other day. I hardly ever go back to his part of the house. And I was like, I can smell your room from around the sliding glass door. Like, something needs to be done. Oh, I understand. I've been in your house. I've gone to that back bathroom. And I'm like, damn, Ethan, clean your shit up. Right. And it's like that fat and there's clothes everywhere. And so he was like, honestly, I just need to clean my room and I need to do my laundry. Well, what did that consist of? I just walked past the laundry room and now there's two huge piles of dirty towels, sheets and blankets. Why is that my problem now? I told you to clean your room with your shit. You wash those towels. Right. And what did he say to that? Well, he's at work today. So I just sent him a text message of the pic, like the picture of the laundry. Well, you know what you should do? You should do the laundry and write him a bill. Mm. Write him a bill. That's genius. You're 18. Welcome to the real world, buddy. Yeah, well, see, I, and I don't even care that he's 18. The towel situation got so bad that it applies to Lorelai, too. First of all, he's only supposed to use two towels in this house. I bought him two specific towels and Lorelai has two specific towels because the towel closet is on their side of the house. So one day my husband who makes plenty of money is getting out of the shower and I see him drying off with a (laughs) t-shirt. Was it kind of like in a sexy way? Like was he doing a magic mic show for you? Like... Hey, I'm dying off and woo. Or was it like just sad? It was sad. And so I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, we don't have any clean towels. We literally have 20 towels in this house. 
if not more. Right. So I went to go search for them and they were all in Lorelai's and Ethan's room because they get in the shower and then forget to bring their towels with them. Right. So they just keep pulling like they're disposable. And if they're not, if they're in charge of their own laundry. So if they're not doing the laundry, There's I'm not getting the towels. Exactly. So, so why don't you put your own set of clean towels in your bathroom where they can't get to it and then when they're out of towels let them dry themselves off with their t-shirts so we do do that except there's our our formal bathroom doesn't have our master bathroom doesn't have space for towels so i kind of have to throw them and stack them up on this little rubber made thing underneath my sink so there's limited space because if not i would take all 20 towels on my side of the room or house and leave them with their two. So after the t-shirt incident, I drank a couple bottles of wine and I took the ramblings of a mad woman and wrote what, how certain rules for them. I wrote everything I was going to buy for them because they argue about laundry baskets and towel and all of this. So I bought them all their own things and then told them if they, I need to go back and say, all right, Ethan, all these towels, you owe me a dollar for each single one of them. Because right. you guys, have, they've, they've reverted back to their old habits, which then leave me, it leaves me angry and I look like the crazy one. Well, you always look like the crazy one. You're the mom. That's, that's just how it works. They're like, what, why are you so upset? It's just towels. What's the big deal? Well, well that's their thing, right. So you go, well, great. It's just towels. You just wash them. I'm not right. washing them. We're all out of towels. Too fucking bad. Mm -hmm. I'm, if I were you, I would leave them there for towels on that side of the house. Take all the towels out of your closet. Stack them up in your fucking bedroom and lock the door. That's and that, that would be it. That's definitely what I have to do because... They, they really do make me look like I'm crazy when th that's what they're going to say. Well, it's just towels. It's not a big deal. I'll wash them. I mean, I'll wash them, Mama. Well, then go wash them. <sighs> but and then keep your fucking earphones, too. That are now broken. Right. I have the evidence. Somebody me broke them. Now, I want to, let's take bets. Who do you think it is? Who do you think stole them? It's 100% Lorelai because she was playing in here yesterday. So Lorelai okay. was yesterday while I was working over on this desk. I told her she could pretend podcast. So then it was all right here in this space, though, which I was fine with. Okay. And at one point, she went to carry my microphone out of the office. And I was like, what are you doing? This is my stuff. Don't touch it. Oh, okay. So she put it back. But I'm thinking she snuck away with something. Of course she did. She's like, I'm going to podcast in my bedroom and be cool. Right. That's the Somebody who, who had a sore throat, who couldn't talk, but then talked for hours yesterday on her make believe podcast. Okay. So wait a minute. If her throat was so sore and she's playing podcasts, why didn't you say to her, well, I guess you're not sick enough to miss school. Let's go back to class. Well, by this time it was after school. And I will tell you that her voice does sound like a man. Okay. So then I'm saying to her, like, how do you think this is helpful for your voice? Mm-hmm. What, what do you mean, mama? I, my <laughs> voice does. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm all fired up about that. I, I just hate my stuff being touched and it's hard when you live with people and it's not just people, but it's your family. Right. That they just don't get it. Mm -mm. They sure don't. Because you know, I want to put a lock about on your office door. Put a Why? lock on your office door. Why? Because that's where the dogs go. So then they're going to say they can't put the dogs up or they can't save the dogs out or. They move the dogs in another room. It's yeah. just a crate. I put a padlock on that door and be like, nobody is coming into my space. This is okay. my space. Stay the fuck out. 
You don't want to listen. Now the dogs are going to be out here. I'm going to have a lock. You physically cannot come in here anymore. Right. See, I don't even think a lock is necessary because I don't know what it is about. Like, I didn't go into my parents' room. I had to ask permission to go into my parents' room. If they, if there was something in their, their room that I needed, I'd have to ask mom or, or my stepmom or dad, you know, can I go into your room for such and such? I woke up the other day and Ethan was in my bed. Huh? <laughs> And when he finally woke up, this was on Monday, I was like, Ethan, how did you get in my bed? And he was like, I don't, I don't really know. He had, he had fallen asleep on the couch and I guess Nate had woken him up in the morning. And instead of going to his own room, he just crawled into bed with mama. So he was sleeping on one side of the bed and I'm sleeping on the other side of the bed. Or there'll be times when... Wait, 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 wait. I, I want to paint this picture for, for a moment. So you wake up your normal time and you roll over and expecting to see your husband. Instead, you have your 18 year old son going, I don't know how I got here. Yeah, no, well, I wasn't expecting to see anybody because everybody was supposed to be gone. And normally he's asleep in his room. Gotcha. Instead, he's in my room or I constantly find Lorelai sitting on my bed, watching something on her phone or playing in my, it drives, get out of my room. And do you kick him out of your room? I do every single time. And I'm not putting a lock on shit, Tabby. This is my effing house. Stay, if I say don't go in somewhere, don't go in somewhere. Well, sounds like you need to make some consequences for coming into the bedroom. It is, I think what it is, I think it's like summer brain. And they all need to have a reality check. Yep. And Sounds the problem like the is, grounding's coming up. Yeah, the problem is, is like, I don't think it bothers my husband. It doesn't I don't think it bothers him. It doesn't have to bother both of you to be something that, that takes precedent for discipline to have to happen. Do you 100%. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. So yeah, I'm going to have to put down... Uh, I'm gonna have to go crazy because that's the only way they'll listen. Until then, you know, we all, we're all a bunch of smart asses and we laugh about a lot of things. So they're gonna laugh it off at first, and then I have to go crazy and I have to scream for them to know that Mama's about to lose her shit. Right, and then they're all like, "It's okay, calm down. Oh my gosh, it's not a big deal." Rah, 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 rah. I'm so right. sorry, love you. Da, da. And they basically, you know, talk you off the ledge. Right, exactly. And completely ignore the fact they put you on that ledge to begin with. 100%. 100%. No, I'm telling you, write Ethan a bill. Start writing him a bill because now okay. he's working. Hey, you know what? This is what college is for. To send those kids off for four years and let some real life kick them in the ass. There's right. no mama to do your laundry when you're away at college. Right. Well, that, see, that's the thing is I don't even think he thinks that's his laundry because my kids, even my newly nine-year-old kid, she does her own laundry. I do not wash their clothes. But those little fuckers find ways around it. How? Well, they throw their clothes in the laundry room. So they know they'll like, they'll, after let's say beach day, they'll throw those things, those wet clothes in the laundry room rather than putting it in their dirty clothes. So then while I'm picking up all the stuff off the laundry room floor, because they know I hate stuff to be on the laundry room floor, I end up washing it. No. Or, Why would I would literally take it out and right. throw it back in their room? Go, nope, this is yours. Nope, right. this is yours. I'm not doing your laundry. Right. That's what I've been doing lately is now I'm just throwing it back out there and throwing it back on their side of the hallway. Because I'm not washing, you're not tricking me into washing your clothes. Right. You're getting manipulated by a nine-year-old. It's not just a nine-year-old, it's a whole fucking crew. That's why I said my roommates suck. Yes. Remember, suck. Nate is the better spouse, but he's the shitty roommate, right? He is, yeah, for real. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, enough about this household. How are you guys doing? We are doing good. Um, we hired someone the other day to build our shed. 
Remember the one that we started like six, seven months ago? Okay. Yeah. So we hired this guy and he's coming out and he's working and he's doing a really good job and it's it's taking some pressure off, which is nice. It's always nice when, uh, you know, there's a difference between yes, we can do it, but two, is it worth our time to do it and our sanity to do it? Mm, exactly. Because like right now it is 93 degrees outside but it feels like 105 yeah we can't be outside doing that that's, yeah. that's just not our gm right and, and like dion says that kind of work is a young man's job good point yeah yep we we have a couple items around here that we need to finish like the trim on our baseboards mm -hmm. there's so many cuts to it that Yes, somebody gave us the tool to do it. However, it's all hand, like on your hands and knees. Oh yeah, that's rough. Yeah, who? I'd rather pay somebody six. I think it was like six hundred dollars, and right. then we have to pay for the material. I'll pay somebody to trim twenty three hundred square feet on their hands and knees. Mm -hmm. I'd rather do that. I bet. I'm sure your hands and knees are pretty worn out, aren't they, girl? Yeah. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. For sure they are. Yeah. So what else is going on there? You know, the same old shit. Yeah. Have you been watching the news? Do you see the stuff about the missing voters? I have. I haven't paid much attention. Look, my family watches the news, and I sit there and pretty much ignore it for the most part. <laughs> you do. I do because the news is always so negative. It's right. always one sided. It's so jaded. You can't get the facts. And I'm like, I don't I don't want to I don't want to absorb this crap. Right. I think in this case, you know, they uh, surprisingly, the news has been very hopeful. And I've noticed a, a change of tone today, which would be, I think, day six that these two gentlemen have been missing mm -hmm. where, because they're looking for volunteers, right? So I don't think that they wanted to be negative while they needed the community to help and come search for these two missing voters. But it's, yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty sad. I feel terrible for the wives at home and right. it's, I don't think they'll ever be found. That's the crazy thing. Yep, it is sad. It really, really is. I will tell you, so, you know, I am obviously, you know, I, I have my foot in the marine industry and I was talking to my hairdresser yesterday. This is exactly why people need to be careful about going out on boats with single engines off the coast. You know, we live in Florida and it's great to get on a boat and want to be offshore. But if you're out there and you lose an engine, you're fucking screwed. So I, I I feel terrible for them. I'm keeping my, I felt like if I said out loud, they're never going to be found. The universe usually is a way of proving me wrong. Okay. So I said it yesterday to Nate. In hopes. hopes. Like I'd wake up this morning and be like, all right, look, Sabrina, you're wrong again. Yeah. The universe doesn't do it. Uh, doesn't yeah. react the way you always want it to. No, no, not at all. So anyway, that's the biggest local thing going on around here so far, though. It was is the two missing boaters. And oh, other than all the shark bites, I'm so sick and tired of hearing shark bites bites. We live in fucking Florida. Newsflash, people. There are sharks in the ocean. That's right. what happens. They're in the fucking ocean. We watched this segment a local news station, this poor little boy got bit by a shark. Oh, he's so, you know, he's so traumatized by these wounds. Do you know what his wounds look like? They were scrapes across the bottom of his big toe. He could have gotten that walking on fucking rocks. But there's an ambulance and he's in a gurney and everybody's surrounding him. And I'm going, it's a fucking scratch. And we wonder why we're and we wonder why our children are a bunch of fucking pussies. Right. Now, do you swim in the ocean? Yes. I haven't in a long time, but yes, I spent a lot of time at the beach. 
Yeah, I spent a lot of time at the beach when I lived in Virginia Beach. I spent a lot of time at, at, at the beach now, but I do not spend a lot of time in the ocean. Okay. Because I don't want to be eaten by a shark. You're not going to be eaten by a shark. <laughs> so I don't go. I know they're in there. I uh, And I have no interest. And I'm not going to be the one crying on the news that I got eaten by a shark because they can't eat me while I'm sunbathing up in my chair. And there you go. But for people like me, I will still go in the ocean. Mm -hmm. I will. I'll go out. I'll have a good time. Because sharks don't want to eat humans. We are not on their dietary menu. What do they want to eat? Fish. Turtles. Yeah. Other sea life animals. They don't want to eat us. It's normally an accident when they eat us. So yeah, because, because oh, um, no, that's what they say surfers look like, right? Turtles on surfboards. Right. Because it's just their arms or their, their mm -hmm. arms coming down. Right. Now I did go in the ocean this weekend uh, when I participated in that mud run mm -hmm. on NA NAS Jacksonville or Mayport Jacksonville. It was for the MWR there. Um, okay myself and some friends did it and part of the washing station included going into the ocean and washing all the mud off of you mm -hmm. and i'd rather be eaten by a shark than sit in mud for the next hour so i went in there and you should have seen me i should have had nate take a picture but uh our friend jen and ben they were cracking up because i was literally rolling around in the waves but it was <laughs> Jen was like, I don't think I've ever seen you in the ocean. I mean, we've been friends for six years. And we've gone right. to the beach probably 50 times together. And Which I was don't go in the water. I don't go in the waters. But I was rolling around like a fat mermaid. Just, <laughs> it was hilarious. She was, she was just standing over and she's like, you have zero dignity. And I was like, I don't. I just want this mud off of me. Although you would make a pretty badass mermaid. Oh, I look like a fat mermaid because I couldn't control the water, like pushing me back and forth. So I literally, you should have seen me. It was a mess. We just roll in and roll. <laughs> and then another wave would hit me and I'd fall over in the other direction. And while I'm trying to like rub uh, mud off of my body. And keep your boobs in. Yeah, keep your boobs in. Keep, you know, keep your underwear up because you are you have mud in your pants and it's a mess. Yep. An absolute mess. But so I did go in the ocean and I was willing to sacrifice myself for mud. Not in mud. Yeah. Plus, I figured there were a lot of people in the ocean that day. All what covered. Were the ice. Yeah. And they all smelled the same way I did. So as long as I stayed closer and could get away first, maybe they would eat one of the other men there and not me or one of the slower females. I did think about it. You did, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Not very logically, but you thought about it. Hey, I survived, so maybe my logic yeah. worked. <laughs> could have. You never know. Right. right. Or the sharks could be like, holy crap, there's a whole bunch of fucking humans in the ocean. We need to go further out. Right. They're like, they we're not dealing with those crazy ass people. Yeah, and the fact that we all smelled so bad. We were all right? covered in mud. They were probably like, what the fuck is this? Be like, oh my God, that is some B.O. We got to go. Yeah, like it's a buffet that's gone bad. Yes, like a Chinese buffet. Right, right. All you can eat. Right, like an all-you-can-eat ethnic buffet because there were all kinds of races of people in there. So for the first oh. time ever, we all smelled the same and smelled terrible. <laughs> that's pretty so funny. Wrong. That's so funny. It's pretty funny. No. So oh. anyways, getting on. So I, yeah, so I didn't get eaten by a shark. Good. Yeah, and uh, that's that's about it. My brain is almost fried here. I'm telling you. What time is it? It's not oh, that far into the day. Like yeah, my brain is kind of fried for today, and it's wow. a Thursday, and just trying to get by. Is it already? It is. Oh, where did the day go? I don't know, but I'm. I have like another week left before I leave for Vegas, so I just have to get. I just have to get by. You'll do it. You'll be good. You can do it. 
So, hey, we have this game that you and I came up with, and I think we should yes. go ahead and play it so we can have okay. some fun. Uh, what was our official title of it? No, I don't know. Do we give a shit or do we give a crap? Do we give a shit? I like, do we give a shit? All right. So do, so the so idea. Tell behind, the reader, there you go. Sorry. It's going to say, tell the readers. Yeah. So the idea behind this game is current news articles or items that we've seen, you know, on social media that people tend to post comments and concerns about. And, uh, you know, you have somebody come up and say, oh, did you see this? And really what you want to say is, I don't give a shit. Or maybe you do. And maybe it's something you're super, super passionate about where the rest of the world might think it's the lamest shit ever. So that's how I, Tabby told me about an article and I was like, we should play this game called Do We Give a Shit? And we'll see where we both stand on a couple things. Things that, some things might be major news, some things might be minor news. So we both came to the table with three articles. Mm -hmm. And I say we just play it and see how this goes. All right, are you gonna go first or do you want me to go first? You go first. Okay, so my first news article is Meghan Markle and Prince Harry could fly commercial, but it wouldn't stop the backlash by town and country. So, do you give a shit or not? So, just to give a bit, little bit of a background on this story, is that the big deal is that they flew a private jet, right? Correct. For vacation. And so, I did, you kind of gave me a heads up on this article, so I went and read one of the anti Meghan Markle articles about it, which then says, you know, that they are big humanitarians. They go around everywhere trying to save the world and the countries that England is in charge of or whatever the ownership is of. And here are these environmental couples using their wealth to fly in a private jet and what they're doing to the environment. And obviously they don't care. Right. So here's the deal. So normally I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit who flies what and where and when or how much carbon footprint you leave. Okay. I don't give a shit. But when you go on national media and you are trying to tell people to change the way they live, live their lives to make a difference in the world, right? And mm -hmm. you yourself are not following through with that. Fuck you. <laughs> you need to live what you preach. So right. let me, so I wrote out some stuff down. Harry had said that they were only going to have a maximum of two children for environmental reasons. Two. For environmental reasons. No, it's not for environmental reasons. You only want to have a max of two children because you don't want any fucking more children. That's what that boils down to. And then on Instagram, he had posted, with nearly 7.7 .7 billion people on Earth, every choice, every footprint, every action makes a difference. Well, guess what? Get off the fucking jet because your action makes a difference too. All right. And then Elton John had the audacity to come in and try to rescue them and saying, well, I let them borrow. It was my jet. I paid for it. And it was a, how do you put it? Um, oh, he came to the rescue by saying that the flight was carbon neutral. Now, just to let everybody know, you can't make a jet carbon neutral. Fucking right. smoke still comes out of the engine. Because he made a donation to Carbon Footprint, which is a charity. Mm -hmm. So, no, you didn't neutralize shit because the Carbon Footprint from that flight is still there. Right, right. So, so you give a shit. You, well, you give a shit because of the hypocrisy of it. Yes, because of hypocrisy. Don't con Now, look, they went on a flight. That's great. They went on a flight. They're living their lives, doing their thing. Nobody's bothering them. But don't come preaching at me, telling me I need to change my life and do shit differently when you yourself are not willing to make those sacrifices for the cause you claim to so 
be passionate about. I ain't got time for that shit. <laughs> so I'll tell you, uh, I as well do not give a shit. <laughs> Tabby is um, choking on her not, is that a plastic straw, paper straw, metal straw? <laughs> Fuck you, it's a metal straw. And right now I wish it was a plastic straw. <laughs> so uh, while she's choking and recovering, I'm gonna say I don't give a shit. And that's only because it, um, I instantly, when I read the article, thought about the fact that Meghan Markle and Harry have a new baby, and I'm sure that their primary reason behind this mode of transportation was the safety of this new baby, and it also made me think of Princess Diana, and that Harry is well aware of what media attention and overall attention on one person could cause her life, right? I mean, when we rewind 20 some years ago, probably even longer than that, Princess Diana died because the media and everybody else wanted a photo of her at all times. So he's used to being afraid of that and afraid of traveling and having his family accessible to the public. So from a from a parenting standpoint, and remembering what Princess, because I can remember the day that Princess Diana died. It, it happened overnight. I know where I was exactly. I know I left a post note on my stepmother's door. She was still asleep before I'd gone to bed that morning, um, telling her to check the newspaper because Princess Diana had passed away, that this has been ingrained in his mind. So this, this young man is going to do everything he can to protect him and his wife. And if, if that includes putting out a little bit of jet fuel to protect his daughter or I don't know, does he have a son or daughter? I think it's a son it, to protect his son. Um, then I get it, whatever. I don't really care. I get the hypocrisy side of it, that it, it's, it's being hypocritical. If I was him, I would go on and say, listen, I want to save the world, but I'm saving my baby first. So fuck off. Right. And it, I would look at him go. And every time you get on television, or you get on social media and tell me how to live my life, I'd look at you and tell you to go fuck off. Just yeah. because you're royalty, just because you have millions of dollars that you get from the British public, mm -hmm. doesn't mean you get to tell me how to live my fucking life. Right. Yeah. Too fucking bad. You put your fucking pants on the same way as everybody else does. Mm-hmm. How do you feel overall about environmentalists then? Are you, do you feel like there's no middle ground for them? They have to be all, all in, hippie, loving, hold, held to the highest standard? Or that there is room for this middle ground, we want to do what's best for the planet, but there's also exceptions to be made? I think there is a middle ground. There mm -hmm. is. But you can't shove a message down somebody's throat without you actually being willing to make the changes. Right. Just, do you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not going to listen to someone who is constantly lighting up cigarettes and who's telling me, oh, you should smoke as they're smoking a cigarette. Right, right. I'm like, really? Now, I could understand if they were a former smoker because they got sick and they're trying to preach the message, then that's different. But if you're still puffing and telling me not to, I'm going to look at you and go, fuck you. Right, that's right. Great. I guess I would take the same thing as if, if a smoker tried to tell me how to eat healthy, right? Exactly. I would look at them and say, fuck off. I'll stop eating all these sweets and carbs when you stop filling your body up with toxic smoke. Correct. So I can get that. I think that you would feel differently about it if if the royal family could could be honest about their hypocrisy, that they could actually stand up and say, hey, we want to do this, but we fuck up here, here, and here, and here. This is where we make exceptions. Absolutely. Right. I, and I, I, could, I could see that. I, yeah. Because considering their lifestyle and their fame, you know, they do have to have other amenities that most people don't have. 
which right. includes getting on jets. Right. So, but, you know, at the same time, it was for a vacation. Yeah. Did they yeah. really have to go to Nice, France for a vacation? Right. They could have gone somewhere else. But mm-hmm. like, like Harry says, every choice has an act has a consequence. Right. That was their choice. Nobody made them go on vacation. Yeah. And vacation from what? Yeah, right? I mean, they live a pretty cush life. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's rough and it has its behind the scenes and you know what I mean? Yeah. That, you know, there's shit that they have to do. But, you know, y- you made the choice to go to vacation there. Mm-hmm. But it went to vacation somewhere else. And yeah, and their smart car, right? Somewhere in driving <laughs> distance. Right. Right? I mean, take a smart car somewhere. You only got a family of three. Exactly. But the other part, you know, and again, it's the hypocrisy. Don't tell 7.7 billion people to change their lifestyle when you are not willing to change yours. I don't see you turning down the money and living your life as a normal human being and raising your children normally and flying commercial and stepping outside of the spotlight for the better good of our planet. Right, and so I could see, um, Amazon is about to ring my doorbell. Um, we'll see if my dogs react at all. That will be fun. Yeah. Oh, someone's, at the front door. someone's at the front door. Man, that's fancy. Not a single fucking dog moved. Wow, your dogs suck. Worst. I mean, I love Link, but your dogs suck. Worst guard dog ever. He didn't even move. So um, that makes a great point, right? There, so they say to seven something billion people to do this, easier said than done. Mm-hmm. It, when, when we're talking about ways to save the planet and ways to reduce your carbon footprint, usually that's a rich man's game. That they don't make the changes themselves. Right. And so, you know, when you're asking us as normal day people or the world as normal day people to use biodegradable this, bio this, that, 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 and this other thing, usually it's things that cost more expensive than the alternative. So if you really want to make a change, how about you go to big business and make those items cheaper so that the everyday person can afford to make the change going forward? Thought? Yes? Did you hear me? I did not. So I, I don't know if it recorded, but I'll just repeat it again. I said, if, if they really want to make a change, why don't they go to big business that makes all the eco safe things so expensive for us available to the everyday user so that we have access to those items? Right. right. Start start with that man that of course I'm gonna p- pick the cheaper of two options. Exactly. If you're gonna donate millions of dollars, donate it to businesses who are gonna be able to improve the technology and get these uh, biodegradable products made at a cheaper rate for everyday man. Right. See now that's something I can get behind. I can I can deal with that. I'm not going to give it to a charity that just goes, oh, you know, we're for the planet. But I, I, you know what? I and I can't say that because I don't know what carbon footprint does. I don't even know if there's a way you can erase a carbon footprint, isn't it? If it's there, it's already there. I, I don't. Know. Yeah, I think there's a way to measure our carbon footprint. Right. I should do that. I wonder what mine is. I don't know. I I would guess mine's not very big. I have a farm. I don't know. There's farting cows. I've got cows that fart. I wonder what things actually calculate into somebody's carbon footprint. I mean, is it like the amount of? Oh yeah, or, you're bad with that. Yeah, like there was the amount of tin or aluminum that I'm using from monsters on a daily basis that might not end up in my recycling bin. Or even if it does, it doesn't actually get recycled. Right. Yeah. I, I'm putting an impact. 
But I only have two kids because I was concerned with my carbon footprint. I mean, think about your carbon footprint with your children. All the towels that they use require you to do more laundry and more drying. Do you know how much my electric bill is? More energy. Do you know how much my electric bill is? No. How much is your electric bill? My water and electric bill every month, this past month, was $550. For your small ass house? I don't yeah. mean that offensively, but for, wow. $550. Woo, damn girl. That's and high. We, we keep our house at 87 degrees. Holy shit. You need to get solar. Yeah. No, I take that back. We keep it at 78, not no. I was going to say, 87, that you, you would be sweating like a whore in church. Yeah. What the fuck? So uh, we keep our AC, and we've done it for about 10 years. It took us a while to get up to it, at, to 78. Mm -hmm. And my water bill and electric bill combined is still $550. I just paid it. Wow. So before we got our solar, our house, the pool house, and the barn was is roughly about on an average about four hundred dollars a month and that's electric or electric and water no i don't pay water because uh, i want to but okay. so for my big ass house the pool house the pool pump the barn electricity outside at the barn all of that it on an average it varies there's some months that's cool lower around 300 some months it's closer to 600 depending on the heat because we have three air conditioners in our house three we have three ac units and we're still cheaper than your house crazy that's crazy you have one unit i know and most and times i'm the only person <laughs> could you imagine what your electric bill would be if you got a pool no or if i wasn't constantly walking around the house turning off all the lights like mm -hmm. i don't understand why somebody has to sit on the couch in the middle of the day if they're watching tv why the overhead light has to be on who is at home in the middle of the day watching tv during well, the week well nobody like, should be there but you no no i mean we just finished summer so all summer long when the kids were home during the day if they're watching tv they have the overhead light on it drives me crazy. Why do you need it? Write them a bell. Yeah, right. Write them a bell. I'm not okay. kidding. I'm telling you. You know, does Laura like it an allowance? Uh, yes and no. I don't always pay her. If she whines and, and cries about it, then I'm not paying her for it. You know, okay. I'm, I'm, I pay her an allowance not for her to do her chores, but so that she knows how to spend money because she was always asking me to buy her something mm -hmm. and she needed to have her own money so she could understand how quickly it comes in and how quickly it can go out. Right. Uh, if she whines and complains about her chores and cries, which sometimes she does, then I'm not paying her. And guess what? You still have to do it. Good. Oh, and, and Ethan's the same way. He gets paid to do his chores. Ethan's very good about his chores. Uh, Lorelai's a little more dramatic. No, she's a little girl. They tend to be dramatic. Yeah. All right, let me go to my article. So All right, I want to hear your article. Pretty much, we don't we don't give a shit when it comes to Meghan Markle and their. Well, no, we're fifty fifty. No, on, right? I right. I give a shit about their hypocrisy. I don't give a shit that right. they took a, a flight to Nice, France. Right. Okay. So my next my article is this was from CNN world okay. Brazil, Brazil's American Amazon rainforest is burning at a record rate research center says so I actually saw a picture of this in the cover of Fox News yesterday okay. and it was, it was this big giant fire and it said Amazon burning for 16 days and I immediately thought that one of the Amazon Prime warehouses had caught on fire no you didn't I did I did until yesterday on Facebook, somebody else posted this article. And Show like, the article. Let me see the article. Um, I printed it out. So this is a CNN article. You can't tell it's in black and white, but that's the rainforest. On fire. On fire. So um, 
Yeah, I assumed it was an Amazon warehouse and I was concerned about my packages um, being late and I hadn't received any notifications of it. And I was like, I guess this doesn't affect me. So then today it finally hit where I started on Instagram seeing celebrities posting about hashtag prayers for the, the rainforest, hashtag, oh no, the rainforest. You know, this is our world oxygen. Why do we care? So then I remembered a conversation that uh, you, Dion, and I had in the pool, I think a couple weekends ago, where Dion informed us that uh, one, a half of the world oxygen actually comes from plankton. I think and it was 70 or 65%, remember? It was yeah, pretty well, high. Yeah, well, I went and I researched it today and, and found somewhere that said it's, it's actually one half of the world oxygen comes from plankton. Okay. And then 20% comes from the rainforest. So it, it's it's not as big of a deal as everybody seems. The other thing that that I found interesting in this article is that these aren't natural fires. These are fires caused by people in Brazil that are trying to clear out land. So I don't know why they've made it an international issue when it needs to be a local burning issue. Like, why are you now asking? So these celebrities were asking for money for donations to some blah, 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 um, to help save, save the rainforest. You know, this pisses me off. Okay. Fucking celebrities asking for money fucking donate your own goddamn money and help out these so-called causes. Seriously. I'm so tired of it. I mean, and why did it take them 16 days of, of this also horrible national burning of our, you know, the Amazon rainforest before they started reaching out and started making it a publicity thing? Right. That's where it's so my opinion is I don't I know I probably should, but I don't give a shit. No, I don't care, especially if most of the burning is coming from people who are trying to clear land and do other things and try to build their um their businesses and their country and trying to prosper. What businesses is, is it of ours? Nobody comes over here and tells us we can't clear land to start a farm. Right. And it's it's a local issue, right? If the farmers are have permission to clear this rainforest that is so essential to our planet, according to these articles, well, then it's a local issue in Brazil for the authorities there to figure out how to safely clear this land. And let's be honest, they were clearing the land. Those fucking trees were going anyways. Pretty much. So if if it didn't catch on fire, would we have ever heard about this? Or would we have just been paying for the fucking beef or whatever was coming out of it or the agriculture? They would have never told us that they cleared so much land for, for their own profit. But now that it's caused a fire, they want us to give a shit and help pay for it. Right. And ask us for our money. Right. And for what? What is our money going to go towards? I have no idea. This, the one, hold on, let me pull it up. The see what um oh i just got an email from a message from ethan saying that he'll take care of that laundry when he gets home oh good <laughs> so uh, i didn't even have to put any words with it it was just a picture of both oh. piles of laundry and he knew exactly what i was referring to i bet he did so it was kyle richardson or richards that posted the very dramatic picture okay the rain for so that's the picture I saw yesterday that I just assumed there was a warehouse on fire. You assumed there was a warehouse there? Well, yeah, because you can't see what's behind the smoke. So I just thought it was a that is the blondest thing I've ever heard you say. Not true because when I posted on Facebook, I had friends say that they thought the same thing. Well, they're blonde too. They, they might be. <laughs> So it says, let's see. And oh, well, besides that, the article also said, so some of these numbers that they're posting are numbers over the last 10 years. So they make it seem like 
the, the facts that they're posting just have to do with 2019 and this fire that's happening. These are fires that have consistently happened over the last 10 years. So they've been consistently burning land mm -hmm. in our precious rainforest for years. For 10, for 10 years. And now they want you to pay attention and listen, but not 10 years ago. You know what? This is the problem with the media. They don't tell you the facts straight up. You can't just read headlines and assume you know what the article is going to be because the headline half the time has nothing to do with the fucking article. Right. And so this is the part that that avoids people getting involved, right? Because you can't trust and you don't know who to trust. And it annoys me when these celebrities, especially when I bring up what my third article is, get behind something so far away from home mm -hmm. it's so far away from home let's let's focus on us let's focus on the people down the street from you in beverly hills kyle kyle richards so mm -hmm. she wants you to donate to a regular kyle richards oh uh, well you don't you don't watch reality tv but she's a real housewife of beverly hills oh it's a woman yes i was thinking like um Who's the Richard Simmons? That's who I was really thinking of. <laughs> no, Richard Simmons is being held captive. What? Oh, oh my God. God. He's held captive. You got to listen to the podcast of uh, like, where's Richard Simmons? According to some people, Richard Simmons hasn't been seen in years. And there's interviews with people that said there's like three people that have been advising him on his life and have kept him captive. It's a great podcast. I'll get the actual name of it, but there's like, cult following for that so no richard simmons is is a in captivity so, um okay. hey i don't give a shit about that one <laughs> so the rainforest alliance community forestry initiative okay what the Yay. fuck i don't give a shit i i don't either that's All probably right. bad but i don't no, I, I don't. I'm worried about that plankton, though. That's that plankton is important. It's 50 percent, 70% of our oxygen. It's important. Yes, it is very important. All right. And and what did we tell your husband? Where did we get most of our knowledge of the rainforest from? Um, High school. Ferngully. Ferngully, yes. <laughs> oh, yep. That's where we got our rainforest education. Right. So most of my 90 babies. Right. Most of my love and Tabby's love from the rainforest comes from that movie called oh. Fern Belly. So if you're a 90s baby, you'll understand and get a good laugh about that. And uh, the, the monster that was behind the destruction of the, the rainforest. So, all right. Give me your next article. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready for this one? Yeah. I can't wait. Earwax color chart. What earwax says about your health? That's one hell of a face, Sabrina. Gross. And it was in the medical news today. So basically, it's a whole article about what your earwax should be. Between the color and the consistency and the stickiness and the wetness. Yeah. So basically, and this is what's hilarious. It says it should be anywhere am between amber orange to a light brown and should be wet and sticky, right? But then it goes on to basically, it varies from person to person. So it can change. They even said anybody with an East Asian descent could have really dry earwax. So basically, it says nothing about your health. It just, it's an article to say earwax like 1700 times because they wanted to gross us out. So did yeah. you read that article and examine your own earwax? No, I did not. You didn't? <laughs> no, I know what my earwax looks like. It right. looks the same. We're okay. There's nothing funky. And if there was, oh, it did say that children's earwax is lighter in color than adults earwax. Cause there's a softer. And as you get older, your earwax apparently hardens. And the older your earwax is in your ear, obviously the darker it's going to be because it collects more debris. That's fucking disgusting. Isn't it? 
and pointless. There was actually studies done about this. We wasted money to figure out the color of your earwax. So tell me, do you give a shit or do you not give a shit? I don't give a shit at all. <laughs> Why not, Sabrina? Well, first of all, I clean my ears daily. Mm-hmm. I hate getting out of the shower and having wet ears. So, and I get excited when there's earwax on it. Cause that means oh, I, I know it's, it's like a fucking prize. It's so satisfying. So when Dion and I get out of the shower and we clean our ears and we go, Oh, Oh, that's so good. We're so good. Oh, oh, oh. And he's like, you're having an eargasm, aren't you? And I'm like, fuck, yes, I am. This uh, feels so good. An eargasm? I love an that. eargasm. We have fucking eargasms. Have you ever done one of those genie things? Have you heard about those where you, like, put your ear against, like, this, this heat thing, and you stick it in your ear, and the whole fucking thing comes out? No, but I have done the Egyptian candle earwax. Uh -huh. where you put the, can it's literally a hollow candle in your ear and it pulls it all the way up. I've done that before and it got a lot of stuff out of there, believe it or not. Was there a reason why you did it or you just did it to do it? Somebody had bought it for me and apparently they thought it was hard of hearing. So I just decided <laughs> to try it. So I my swear they would have gotten that from though. Right. It's kind of a weird gift to receive. Yeah, well, you know, things happen. So my sister-in-law, like, um, all of a sudden couldn't hear. And even though she cleans her ears daily, she said that it's happened to her a couple times before, and she knows that she has to go buy this package. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's that same kind of thing that Roman candle. So I was at my sister's house while they were doing this and they went into the bathroom and she was helping her with it. And you could hear them like screaming as whatever this blob was. And I can only imagine stranger things of this slug coming out of her ear. But so, then they're like, Sabrina, come look at this. Fuck you. So uh, basically you're saying the other was coming out of her ear. Right. One of those demi gog, whatever they're called, was coming out of her ear or the mind flare. Oh, it's always made me curious, though, because I do enjoy cleaning my ears. Is it kind of like an AC unit that needs to be maintained? Should we? Or like an, what's the stuff called? They shoot up your ass to clean out your asshole? What are you, you mean an enema? That thing. Like maybe I should what do are, this. Wait, wait, wait. What are you shooting up your asshole? Don't they put liquid up there? They can, but they have the home deposit thing, so or you don't have to shoot shit up your asshole. Why are you putting things up your asshole, Sabrina? Well, that's for another podcast, but this is how I imagine an enema goes, is that they stick some type of clear tubing up your butt and then hose it out. That's a colonoscopy. Oh. What's an enema, then? Oh my god. So, so when you're constipated, when you're constipated and you can't poop, uh -huh. there's these little, they're soft, they're about that big, and they're about that thick, right? Little depositories, and you slip it up your asshole, and you hold it in until it dissolves, and in about five minutes, you're gonna shit everything all the way back to kindergarten. Uh, That's what's going to happen. Have you ever done that for weight loss? Not for weight loss, but I've done it because I've been so fucking constipated. It was bad. Listen, I'm pro number two. So I take fiber gummies all, every Do day. You? Yeah, I, I, uh, I can't imagine anything worse than being constipated. That just, oh, it's, it's horrible. So I, I've never done that before because I'm a pretty constant person. But... <laughs> I have for like a weight loss challenge. One time my friend and I, we had made a bet against somebody. And so I was like, I'm totally drinking one of those like Epicat or one of those. Citrate, um, mag citrate magnesium or something like that. Those will, oh my God, you will be shitting pissed for the, the next three days. I know I did. It did help the weight loss though. So it was a waste of time. It's a waste of time. Yeah. 
But I was willing to do it. Look, I've, I've had to do those before. They I, but hard. I thought an enema was a tube up your butt, too. I think you can get them in that form, but they also come with a depository. You can just pop. Pop them in there. Oh, just okay. Pop in your, just pop them in your butt. So, so getting back to the ear, that makes me want, like, those candle things, if we should do that as regularly as we should clean out all our systems, right? You blow your nose, you clean your colon. Uh, people don't douche anymore, so I don't know how we're cleaning out our vag these days. Um, I'm just trying to think of the systems I have. My stomach, people go on detox systems, right? Right. Maybe I should do that to my ear. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if you want to stick an enema in your ear or not. Not the enema, the candle thingy. It's kind of cool. I mean, you should try it. Just <laughs> here's a warning, tip warning for yeah. you. All right, I might order one right now. When you do it, because it literally is a candle, you have to make a plate thing to catch the hot wax. Otherwise, it fucking falls on your head. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that is what my sister-in-law did, because she had this, like, plate thing, kind of like you're yeah. at church. Yes. What if my yes. hair catches on fire? Your hair won't catch on fire, because... You have that plate there, and it's only hot wax. But so when I did it, we didn't realize that we needed that. Oh, gosh. So a hot wax was landing on the side of my face. Uh, and I'm like, son of a bitch, that hurts. That hurts. Somebody. So we had to stop and then create a um, paper tray to stick the candle through and shove it back in and then turn it back on. You, t I bet if you read the instructions, you completely skip fucking step one. I didn't read the instructions. I thought the person who did it knew what the fuck they were doing. <laughs> Apparently now, not. This is what I found on Amazon, but it looks like a spray bottle connected to a tube. Uh huh. It's called that's an ear wax remover irrigation tool. Oh, that's one of those things that it, it's like, um, nope, I can't see that. Hello. That yeah. looks like a dildo. Oh, wait. Okay, yeah. That's that's a professional version of, of the baby thing you used to use um to clean baby ears. Uh, like the sucking thing? <laughs> the sucking things that you use for babies? Right, yes. Uh -huh. The little round ones, that is just like a fancy version of that where it like really pushes it out. Oh, here it is. Ear candling. This lady looks so relaxed. Does she? Yeah. It is kind of relaxing. She looks very relaxed while the person she trusts on the other side is a... Look how relaxed she is. She's like, oh, this feels so good. I hear I'm letting you. somebody stick a fucking candle in my ear and I like it. Yeah, she doesn't even look like she's phased by the fact that that thing at the end is on fire. Well, they don't show you that part now, do they? Right. It says ear candling is considered an art form by many that soothes the mind, body, and soul. Wow. That's some deep fucking writing right there. Oh, wait. This is a book. It's a book. Does the it teach you how to make the candles? Ear candling, the essential guide and overview of the practice. So you know what that means? Is that article... Somebody gives a shit. Well, apparently a, a good few people give a shit. If somebody wrote a book about it, about earwax, somebody gives a shit. Well, somebody. Six people. There's six reviews. Six people. <laughs> six people give a shit. We're not six, one of them. Six. No. Six people out of 7.7 7 billion people give a shit. Right, right. Not a good ratio, people. No, not at all. Well, that's weird. I bet I didn't even think about going to the medical uh, website for articles. I bet there's some pretty weird shit on there. Oh, I didn't think about that. I, I, because I was running behind today, uh -huh. I went to Google and typed in, like, 
today news and just scrolled through headlines and quickly picked three. Uh, <laughs> That's all I did. That's funny though, but I'm going to probably add the medical. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to add the medical, like a medical journal app to my phone because I bet that shit's pretty interesting. Or I'm going to end up diagnosing myself with 17 million different types of disorders. Okay, please do not become that person. I will have to disown you if you do that. All right, here's my second article. All right. This was um, from today.com. And this happened actually about two weeks ago, but I wanted to mention it to you last week. Uh, Jessica Simpson mom shamed over photo of seven-year-old daughter with dyed hair. So Jessica Simpson shared a photo of her daughter getting the ends of her hair dyed purple on Instagram and said that she was inspired by the new Disney movie uh, Descendants. So then all of a sudden there were moms on Instagram saying, so young, it's a shame. Why would you ruin her hair? Isn't she too young to be dyed, uh, to have her hair dyed? Why are you, uh, again, ruining this child's hair? And then the next day, the reason I found it is because I follow Pink on Instagram. So then right. Pink posted a, a photo of her daughter with her hair dyed and said that she was, you know, supporting Jessica Simpson and basically people could fuck off. So do you care or do you give a shit or not? Well, I don't give a fucking fly who what shit. Not even close. I don't care. And you know, it's all the little moms. We're fucking judging her. Go fuck off. It's none of your goddamn business what she's letting her child do or don't do. Mind your own fucking business. Seriously. Yeah, I agree with you. It's the ends of the hair, which grow out and can be cut off. Right. Sorry. And look, they are correct. It is not a good idea to be dyeing the child's full head of hair at an early age because it does strip the hair itself. But if it's the ends and when it grows out, they'll cut it off. It's not that big of a deal. And not only that, you don't even know if it was permanent. It could have been that they've got this new chalk shit out that comes out in like three days and it's not permanent. It doesn't damage the hair. Right. I think it's terrible. I think that, um, or, or the, like you said, the mom shaming portion of it, portion of it was terrible. First of all, it's not your fucking business, what she does to her kids. And if you don't like it, I don't understand why people follow celebrities just to say mean shit to them. Because they have nothing better to do with their own pathetic lives. Right. So I dyed my daughter's hair teal when she was, I don't know, five or six, she wanted teal hair. And so I asked my hairstylist if she thought it was okay. And my hairstylist said, yes. She said, she's young enough that that hair is not going to be there when she's an adult. Right. That hair is going to grow out. Your hair grows from the root, not the ends. She said, just don't touch the root of her hair. Right. Buy the proper products. Don't use any cheap shit. And then make sure to heavenly condition her hair. And that was it. And so I did it. And and the only person now that had the nerve to say something to me, of course, was my mother. Uh, you know, I can't believe you did this. But that's because it comes from this old school mentality of it's going to ruin your hair. Her hair's perfectly fine. Yeah. And I think your mother was just looking for something to bitch about. Oh, look, my mother doesn't agree with, like, she doesn't think that little girls should be taken to the nail salon to get manicures and pedicures and that, you know, that that makes them spoiled. Well, like I said, my nine-year-old does her own laundry and she's been doing her own laundry for a year. And if if she is a, rewarded for getting good grades or good behavior and I take her to spend 30 bucks at a nail salon, fuck off. Right. There's nothing wrong with taking your kids to go get a manicure. As long right. as you're not putting fake nails on her, you're fine. Sure. Right. And that's, see, that's something I won't let her do, which she she's not happy about it. But I don't want her to mess up her nail beds and all of that. 
and, and maybe that comes a little bit, well, it's not from my own ignorance because I've asked my nail lady if I should let her do it and her answer is no. So, and I can tell you no, because I have them done. And as you can see, look at my thumb. It's falling okay. off. It's all thin. It's horrible. So thin. nothing. So I had shellac done and I had been doing it every three or four weeks. And what happened is my nails are just so thin. They couldn't catch up. So now my nails are really thin. And so as the shellac is coming off, my nail underneath is really, really thin. And so everything hurts. So I have to keep putting extra um, clear nail polish on them, keep them really short and out of the way. So no, it's not good for your nails, even as an adult. Right. And look, if even if a parent chooses, here comes somebody else. Oh, that's my kid. Even <laughs> if a parent chooses to do it, you better not. He's, I dare, he's going to ring the doorbell. Like he can't go through the garage. Let's see. Oh. He just looked at me. He knows we're podcasting. Nope. He's going around the other way. Smart kid. There we go. Good boy. Uh, he looks so cute in his little construction outfit. Oh, what is he doing now? He works for a construction company for our neighbor's construction company, and he's cleaning up job sites and new home builds nice. and learning how to power wash. And this is his part-time job outside of college. So nice. Yeah. He's out in the heat and earning his money. And I think it's great. I think that's what that's will make him really appreciate his money because it's hard, hard work. It is right. He's like he chose a profession that's um, difficult. It's difficult mm -hmm. to be outside in the heat. So I'm proud of the decision he made to take the job. Honestly, I probably tried to talk him out of it at first because it is a hard job, but it's a better lesson for him to do it and. Uh, like you said, it probably makes him appreciate his money more. Yep, absolutely. So Jessica Simpson's hair, we do not give a shit. No, not at all. Not even all close right. to giving a shit. Perfect. Good. And leave each other alone, moms, right? I mean. I know. Stop. I mean, like, fucking pay attention to your own house and to your own kids. Stop worrying what other people are doing. Right. Yeah, it's it's obnoxious. And after Lorelai had teal hair, you remember we let her, so she chopped the ends of her hair off because obviously that's the part that was uh, you know bleached and dyed. So mm -hmm. she chopped all of that off, and then you remember she shaved the entire side. left side of her hair. Mm -hmm. Again, we got some sideways looks on that, especially because she was in cheerleading at the time, and the cheer, <laughs> oh, the cheer coach was like, "You're killing me," because they had to figure out all the girls have to look the same and they had to style their hair according to the to Lorelai's shave <laughs> she could only have a ponytail on one side and you know it's not my hair and if my child wants to express herself through shaving one side of her head off then what do I care okay so I have a question for you though if mm -hmm. cheerleading came back and said because she shaved her head and that she couldn't be on the cheerleading team, would you be okay with that? Because yeah, she wouldn't be, quote, in uniform. Yeah, I mean, if that's the rules. I think that if I, I might throw a fit if it wasn't in some type of guidelines beforehand. Okay. It, they definitely took my money while her head was shaved. Right, so they had to deal with it. Right, so then I probably would have thrown a fit. Um. But if it was clearly stated in the guidelines that you have to have hair that's blah, 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 and that's part of the, the sport, then, then yeah, I mean, that's a choice that we made. Right. Yeah. What about you? The same? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're, if it's in the guidelines and you made a choice, too bad. That was your choice. That was, that was the quote, unquote, consequence for your creativity. Yeah. Yeah, right. Just like, um, you know, in my own job, there's, I can't, I can't have, I would love to have gray.
There you are. What? I stopped talking because I knew we were having some tip technical difficulties. OK, yeah, we did. So, what was the last thing you heard? Um, in your industry and gray hair, but barely got the gray hair out. OK, um, yeah, in my industry, you know, I would love to have gray silvery hair, but there's just certain things that a corporation won't allow us to do. So if you want to be expressive with your body and have tattoos or piercings or certain hair colors, you you have to find a job which sometimes aren't the best jobs or high paying jobs mm -hmm. that will allow that. Yeah. That's it's just part. That's just real life. It that's is. How it works. Right. And you can't whine and complain that people are discriminating against your free spirit or all this other bullshit. You work no. for a company. Exactly. And if you're that upset about it, don't work for the company and let your free spirit pay the bills. Right. And there you go. All right. Are you ready for my third topic? Yeah, let's go. All right. What is spike? Uh, what is spiked seltzer? Today, anch anchors try summer's hottest drinks. I had a really hard time saying that. What kind Do of drink? Do you give a shit? Spiked yep. seltzers. So like spiked water. Like the Henry, the um, the White Claws and Smirnoff and all that stuff. So they had a whole segment about the Today Anchors drinking today's hottest or the summer's hottest drinks. Do you give a shit? No. Did they run out of shit to talk about on the Today Show? Apparently they do. There's nothing to talk about good on the Today Show. Right. I, I mean, I guess if. No, I don't care because listen, everybody's tastes are different. Yeah. You but have... have. But I mean, who? I mean, really? What producer thought that would be a great story? Yeah, especially to make it a headline. What's the big fucking deal? It's a fucking drink. There's, there's nothing special about it. And not only that, the whole spiked water thing is quite old at this point. There's like six different companies that have come into it. There's been lots of advertising. So the Today Show is freaking late to the, to the market on that one. Right. Like maybe it was the summer drink of 2018, but not 2019. No, definitely not 2019. You're right. So the story seems like, first of all, they needed a filler and they're also late to the game. Right. So it's really fucking lame. Right. Yeah, it is. I don't give a shit, it, especially because everybody's tastes are so different. Like you have your favorite flavors, right? Right. Oh, yeah. And all about that black cherry. Better keep your damn hands off my black cherry. <laughs> right. And Nate doesn't like the black cherry. And there, yes, there was some he does. Well, there's one okay. flavor. I don't know what flavor it is, but on our boating trip, he tried stealing my black cherry. And I was like, fuck no, get your hands off my black cherry. Right, right. Yeah, everybody's taste is so different. Like, what What would it matter? Exactly. And why Why are you telling me this? There, There's so many other things that are going on in the world, like the Amazon rainforest that you could have <laughs> told me about. I was just you could have went into more detail about that instead of telling me about what flavor of spiked water you like to drink. You know, that's a good point is I think that on certain articles that maybe we would give a shit if they would truly connect it to us because this rainforest article that I just threw on the ground, it goes into talking mostly about the ag agriculture in Brazil. And then it starts bitching about the economy down there and the 
just about it, somebody who's in power down there. So the article fucking goes from, don't you care about the rainforest to somebody's personal agenda? And Which, go ahead. I, it's so frustrating because I agree with you. I wish they would keep the articles on long enough to make a real fucking point. Right. I mean, when they talk about some of this important stuff, it's less than two minutes long. Two minutes. Two. Two fucking minutes. But then they'll spend five to 15 minutes, not including all the pre-advertisement, about the fucking water. The spiked water. How about we spend that 15 minutes and talk about the real shit that's going on in the world? Right. And and maybe, right, explain a little bit more about the rainforest. And instead of asking for our money, be realistic of how we can help. I can't go down to Brazil and fight this fucking fire. I'm also not sending money to whatever something rainforest alliance, whatever group. But maybe just tell me some general everyday things that aren't going to kill my wallet that maybe I could help out with. Exactly. You know, and sometimes donating doesn't do any good because the money never makes it to where it's supposed to go. Right. I mean, charities, most of the time, not all charities either, right? But it's a third-party donation. Right. And you're better off, like charities for homeless, you're better off to go to your local homeless charity, right? Like your local neighborhood and go there and donate because you know the money's going directly to the people like in your community. Right. Instead of these national organizations. Right. Yeah, I agree. And then I feel like, you know, unfortunately, and it's, I don't know if it's really unfortunately, but most people are concerned about what directly affects them. Of course. So for me down here in Florida, I think, well, the rainforest is so far away, and how does that really concern me? And instead of trying to be so flashy about it and say, we're losing all of our oxygen. Well, first of all, I already know that only 20% of the world's oxygen comes from the rainforest. So let's let's be real with one another. Right. It's Tell not us. all of it. Right. We're not going to suffocate. Right. Let's, let's be real about it. They're going to freaking talk up and use up all the rest of it. Right. And they were cutting it down anyways. Right. Which so they we're... left out in the headline. Right. Exactly. So if we want to talk about them cutting down the rainforest and that being a bad thing, then let's fucking focus on that. But not because of the fires, because this problem has been going on for the past 10 years. Right. We call a spade a spade. That's how this shit works. Right, right. I agree. All right. So my so we don't give a shit. No. We don't give no, a shit. No, we do not give a shit about fucking spiked water today show. Don't no. care. No, but for the record, your favorite is black cherry of what brand? White claw. White claw. That's oh is my that, God. It's my is favorite. Is that the go to drink now? When I do drink, yes, that is. Yeah. What's so good? So, um, seltzers, they really did kind of hit the market, what, last summer? Mm hmm. Yeah, it was about last year. Are they low in calorie? Yes, no calories, like zero sugars. It literally is water. I don't know how they get the alcohol. It has the same alcohol content as a beer, and there's no sugars. And it tastes like water. It tastes like a fizzy flavored water. And it's really good. And it sneaks up on you. You take one. You're like, yeah, this doesn't taste like anything. By the halfway through the second one, I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> but no, they're good. And you don't get that um, fullness like you do when you drink a beer. Well, that's nice. And they, Nate says that they're refreshing during the summer. We all live somewhere that's super hot. Very it's, hot. It's easier to digest than a beer. Yes. Yes, it is. So we're fans over here at Not a Safe Space of flavored hard. Are they called hard seltzers? 
Hard seltzers, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hard seltzers. Um, we just don't need fucking news articles about it. No, we don't. We didn't need a news article to find out about it. Right. Maybe because we're smart people and we saw them at the grocery store and said, hey, let's try this. Ooh, that shit's good. Yum. We, we should all me or we saw a commercial and went, oh, okay, let's try that. Go out to the store and there it is. But I didn't need to see it on the Today Show. Watching what? it on the Today Show did not make me want to go to the store and buy it. Do you watch the Today Show? Uh, okay, so that's really kind of hard. So my mother-in-law watches the Today Show, and in the morning we go over to her house, and then we sit with her for a while, and she always has it on. So that's about as close as me watching the Today Show as I get. Mm-hmm. I, I just wondered, because I agree with your review on them, that their segments are too short. Way too sh- All news segments are way too short. Right. Nobody gets to the point. We just want to give a highlight, give you a little bit longer version of the highlight, and that's it. So, no. And, and that kind of reminds me of, I was listening to a podcast this morning where they were talking about people... Um, <sighs> People say that they want to new, learn new things, that they watch the news, that they try to to educate themselves. But really, if you're just watching the Today Show or any news source in segments, mm-hmm. and then all you do is go and regurgitate what these anchors have told you, rather than then taking the time to go on to Google and start Googling it and clicking. Like, I, I mean, I pulled one from CNN. I pulled one from Fox News. Right. I want to read all sides of it before yes. I come up with my conclusion that it says I'm educated on something. Right. Just finding an article on Facebook and reposting it does not make you educated. Mm-mm. No. Especially when most of the time you either haven't read the article or the article is extremely one-sided. It is It's frustrating. Look, go and freaking read and educate yourself. Stop being a fake, intelligent person. Right. Especially, I mean, shit, if it wasn't for Facebook yesterday, if the Amazon fires would have come up, I definitely would have looked like a dumbass because I thought it was a warehouse. Well, that part made you kind of look like a dumbass. (laughs) Right? That that was horrible. Could you, thank God I work from home. Because could you imagine if I'd gone into the office and been like, oh my God, did you guys hear that? The Amazon Amazon freaking caught on fire what are we gonna do how are they going to you know deliver next day delivery the warehouse is on fire you know i got important shit being delivered i know i i probably would have done that too it's ridiculous. i know you would have that's the sad part i know and that's coming from a pretty educated person but i'm telling you the first thought was my first thought for hours yesterday hours it literally was hours, girl. I I saw that picture and then went on with my day. And then it wasn't until at night when somebody, you know, people get off work and they're sharing stories on Facebook that I was like, oh, it's the rainforest. Okay. Let's talk about this picture for a minute. Did you not notice anything weird? Because, you know, Amazon does have, you know, warehouses. One's uh-huh. in your one's in your hometown yeah where was the road where was the fucking parking lot it's behind all the smoke look i don't know what's no. on look, look around the fucking smoke it's nothing but trees you don't no. think there would be a road there would be a sidewalk you didn't think what well, sabrina how could you not i mean no. i mean let me tell you what so when i saw your post on facebook <laughs> And you're talking about, like, Amazon, the building, is on fire. And I'm looking, and I'm going, the fuck is she talking about? <laughs> no, I'm confused because she obviously is confused, and I don't get it. Right? <laughs> because I'm going, it's a fucking forest. It's on fire. Right. Why are we talking about, like, Amazon Prime? That's what I thought was on fire. I was concerned. I was concerned uh, for the company. I'm concerned. I'm concerned for you. 
it's it's all this bleach seeping into my brain. Oh my gosh, do not dye Lorelai's hair. Right. <laughs> this is at least 16 years of bleach setting in and affecting my brain at this point. Oh goodness. But it's also like the fucking gorilla in the room, right? Because I see something and I just, in my mind, I've already imagined a building and everything behind that cloud of smoke. Don't you mean the elephant? No, you. we talked about a fucking gorilla the other day. Oh, right, that gorilla. <laughs> that gorilla. That gorilla. I thought you meant like the elephant in the room. No, I mean, b- before the Facebook post that educated me, I would have sworn that I saw a picture of the warehouse on fire. Because right. in my mind, it's behind that wall of smoke. With no streets around it. No road to it. No, they no just road. take the road. No streets. Right. No fucking parking lots. No right. cement. Nope. No electrical lines. Look, I don't know what it looks like in the rest of the country. I don't know what's going on out there. Goodness. <laughs> Oh, my gosh, girl. All right. Here's my third article. Okay. Tell me your third article. All right. Here. I didn't print this one out, but I'm going to read it. From This is from Fox News, and there's several articles, all listed underneath the title of Homeless Crisis. Uh, Seattle residents blame inefficial, inefficient elected officials for homeless problem. They say that they've lost faith in the system. Former Los Angeles City Administrative Office homeless problem going going to get worse before it gets better portland residents business owners want city officials to fix the homeless problem so this is my problem with it okay i want to hear this do i give a shit yes and no because i do give a shit about homeless people um i am sympathetic to especially the children that are living on the streets because of their parents and and whatever. I also understand that there is a a homeless epidemic that is connected to mental health and to our previous vets that I just don't want to say these are lazy fucking people that are choosing to live on the streets, right? Okay. However... I don't find it to be a coincidence that all of these articles are occurring in Portland, San Francisco, and LA, which all happen to be very liberal states that all happen to also be the homes to where all these celebrities that are currently posting save the goddamn rainforest. But I don't see them on the streets of Portland and LA and San Francisco, which has the highest amount of money per capita, the the city of San Francisco, in the billions, Mm -hmm. yet they have such a large homeless problem because maybe we're not concentrating at home. Oh, we're definitely not concentrating at home. Look, did you hear the thing that um, the San Francisco mayor had said? Mm -mm. He blamed Texas. He said all the homeless people were coming in from Texas. Really? Fucking take responsibility. You guys have made the cost of living so fucking ridiculously expensive. Nobody can afford to live there. There's no trade. There's no, you don't build any money. There, you don't have, so like Florida, we have tourism. Out in California, nobody wants to go to fucking Disney World. They want to come here or Disneyland out there. They'd rather come here. There's no tourists out in California. And look, it's a pretty um, state and everything. I never fucking live there. I right. never live there. They're out of their damn minds. I have seen organizations that help you move out of California. Like, that's their whole goal is to get you out of California. Pretty much what's probably going to happen is you're going to have all these celebrities who pretend like they give a shit and all the homeless people around them. Right. Well, that's that's the way it's becoming. Right. As they said, you know, in San Francisco, you can go within certain streets and it's beautiful. But then you don't go south of such and such or north because then there's vomit, piss and feces on the ground Mm -hmm. from these homeless people that 
Um, it, it said one of the issues is because they're turning these apartments and affordable housing into high-end condos. So then they're forcing these people out of their homes that can't. Now I've looked at real estate in, in San Francisco because my husband was offered a job out there. And so we live in a 2,300 square foot home now. Mm-hmm. We're, you know, let's say $250,000, right? $300,000. We could purchase an 11 square foot home in San Francisco for $800,000. Exactly. And the income wasn't any better. No, it's not. So we can't afford to live out there. So they said the the lowest income or what is considered poverty in San Francisco is what is considered middle class in New York. Wow. Because they've just priced everybody out of it. Right. There you are. <laughs> okay, so you stopped the, the, because they priced everybody out of it. Yeah, I stopped talking after that just so you didn't have to cut and chop everything up. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like these celebrities, especially around election time, they can't help but get on their fucking bullhorns and talk about national issues. We want to talk about this. We want to talk about that. You guys have a big fucking problem. Mm-hmm. In your own state, fix it. Right. Well, and again, hypocrisy. Why would I listen to somebody about a national issue who can't handle the shit in their own state? Seriously, especially to that magnitude. Right. So there, in in San Francisco, there was a bill that um, I think they den- denied. I can't remember if they they passed or denied it. However, the bill was about mental health mm-hmm. in that they would require the homeless people that had mental health issues to get treatment. Well, then the, the liberals all said, well, that's not fair. And you're encroaching on on their rights and all of this. So what would you rather us do? Just fucking leave them on the street? How is that approaching their rights? If they have mental health issues and they need help, what is wrong with getting them help? Right. But you know what? In another two years, they're going to be screaming, oh, we need federal funding so we can help all these mentally ill people get off the streets. Right. That's the part that, that makes me mad. Like, don't, don't make it a national homeless crisis. Make this a West Coast crisis. And you guys figure out how to fix this. This isn't something that happened overnight. No, it sure isn't. You have chosen to turn a blind eye to this. Right. They have. They have chosen to do whatever the hell they thought was best, but not in the best interest of everybody, and do whatever they want. You know, I was telling Dion, I go, you know, I said, for lack of better wording i said we may be coming across another civil war here but instead of the north versus the south it's gonna be the east versus the west that's true yeah it's just it's ridiculous i wouldn't like i said i would not live out there not a chance in hell yeah i don't i don't well i couldn't afford to live out there right no, you would be living in a tent. You would be homeless. Right. For what? And that's the thing I don't understand. For what? Do you know what I mean? There is nothing so fucking great about San Francisco. 
I mean, I like I like San Francisco. I've been there before. I I enjoyed going there and visiting. It's a very cool city. The setup's very cool. Alcatraz is there. All of that. Wow. But, yeah, but the food is delicious. the The beach is too fucking cold to swim in, in my opinion. Um, but the the problem is, it's 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 your guys' problem and fix it. Right. It's not ours. Yeah, fix your own. There's plenty of money in California. Oh, the, there's you know, lots of money in California. Right. The the higher end is is high end, super fucking high end. Fix it. Right. Quite a disparity between um, incomes for a state that claims it wants to be a socialist. Right. Yeah. It's it it makes it very hard. So that's why I say I'm 50-50 on it. I I am concerned for the people that are homeless and what drove them to that. I can't, nobody would choose that, right? Well, I, I take well, that back. Some people may. Yes. Right. There's some people that, in my opinion, you know, and it's been proven, if you hand people things for free, it ruins their ability to have a good work ethic. Absolutely. So, and maybe there's some people that are choosing to do that. However, a great portion of people probably wouldn't. So there's compassion there for those people. For the state of California as a whole, I don't have a fucking, I don't have compassion for you. Fix your problem. Right. And no compassion whatsoever. Seriously, you, look, my mother's always had a phrase and it says, if you, you make your bed, you fucking lie in it. And right now they've made themselves a homeless city. So fucking lay in it. Yeah, fix it. Yeah, fix it. The the but, problem, yeah. Yes, yeah, I mean, like, again, I have no sympathy. Like, there are people who live out there who have billions and billions and billions of fucking dollars. I'm not saying that they should have to give up their money to fix this problem, but they need to start electing officials in that are going to fix the problem. Right. And that's to do too bad. Right. And that's the thing that drives me crazy. Whenever you see an, an international disaster, mm. you know, a, an earthquake here, an earthquake there, you always see the U.S. give, and this is on a federal level, giving money to these countries. It, my stance on that has always been that that there's too many people here in this country that need help right so even from you know a national level to state level to city level the homeless people in san francisco is san francisco's issue it then becomes california's issue and then eventually a federal issue however and i'm hoping that donald trump is is a dick enough to say this is your guys's fucking problem if you want me in your books if you want the government's help then let the president in your books. Right. Absolutely. Because, so see, here's how it's supposed to work. If a state is not running their government correctly, people are normally supposed to pick up their shit and move out. And as more people move, the less money the state gets. Mm -hmm. Right. So they become poorer and poorer. And then they normally that's their incentive to start changing things around, to start building the economy, trying to bring more jobs back in. So people will move back into their state. Right. But they're not doing that. And I and like I said, I would never live in California. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are moving out of California. Mm hmm. Well, I think the problem becomes right is how can you afford to move out of there. If you can't even afford a meal or clean clothes and all of that stuff, it, the cost of actually picking up and moving mm -hmm. is difficult. So I did read in one article where it said that they were shipping these homeless to different states because the cost of living is different. Right. Um, again, that is California's issue. If you're you're setting up this atmosphere that's not welcoming and inviting and no wonder why now i i recognize that i see all these these advertisings to come and visit california 
Right. They, they're they trying to build their tourism back up so they can get some money back into the state. Because yeah. half of their half of their population can't pay taxes. Right. There's no jobs. So, and that's the other thing. Why in the hell would rationalized people work three or four jobs to live in a shitty 400 square foot nasty apartment with right. three other roommates? It's easier to be homeless and collect a um a check from the government. Why yeah, would that was the answer from the company that that wanted to hire my husband when my when he was like, well, is the pay the same range or what are we talking about? And he was like, no, it's still in the same range, which would have, it's our range here on the East Coast. And he was like, you know, most of our employees work a second job. What? My, yeah, my husband makes over six figures. Why would he go and get a second job just to come and work in your city? Like, give me a break. It's like, go fuck yourself. Who the fuck do you think you are? You are not this all God mighty, better than everybody. California is the fucking best. Right. Really? Wow. Yeah. And, and I guess until you said about the tourists there in, or tourism, and then me recalling watching these commercials, which is filled with cele celebrities of how great California is, so that they're trying to attract more tor tourism, that you don't hear most of our friends talking about wanting to travel to California either. It no. used to be the place people wanted to go. Yep. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, I want to go to Napa Valley. It would be really awesome. And you know, and I could still kind of see that. But part of me goes, I look at the prices of everything between the food out there, the flight to get out there and everything. And I'm going, all of this to drink a glass of fucking wine? I, I'd rather spend this money and go to New York. Now, mind you, Dion doesn't really like New York either, but at least you got Broadways and there's stuff to do and there's really good fucking food in um, New York. Okay, here we are. <laughs> so perhaps, you know, the the state of California, Oregon, and Washington, where where all these issues have been, should, should go talk to the state of New York, right? Because when, when I saw the article, I assumed that New York City would be in it. Right. Because I, I thought, when I think of homeless people, I think of New York, right? The bums in, in, in the subway and all of this. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know this, but I I believe that New York has, of course, there's still homeless people there, but it was an issue that they've had and been able to find some resolve to and to assist people and get people into, you know, housing that was affordable and all this other stuff where California apparently has turned a blind eye to it for so long. Well, because California doesn't give a shit. California does not give a shit about its people because the half that has money are fucking entitled pricks who don't care about anybody else but themselves unless it's on Instagram. Right. That's all. Sorry. That's true. That's true. So, well, it's, I think that I, I give a shit on this one. I give a shit for the people that are affected by it. I don't give a shit on the basis that it's a crisis that on a national level we need to worry about. Couldn't agree with you more. So, um, well, that was fun. What did you think about that? I liked it. I like this game. We're definitely going to have to add this into our repertoire of uh, events. And I think it was a pretty slow week, I think, when it comes to news articles, things that are flashy, things that people, you know, sometimes there's, there's fucking articles that 
people fight about on Facebook or Twitter forever. Mm -hmm. um, so I think whenever we come across that, we should definitely put this game in effect. Okay. I like it. Because I think it's fun. I think, you know, it gets our opinion. I think, again, we're still talking about topics. And, I mean, maybe you guys give a shit. Maybe you don't. I'd like to know. So if anybody's listening, go ahead on our Instagram page and tell us whether you gave a shit or you didn't give a shit and on which topic. Yeah, that would be great. That'll be fun. Yeah, we want to hear it. And then, of course, any comments, rants, suggestions, please email us at notasafepodcast at gmail.com. Nope, I didn't get that right. Nope. <laughs> Go ahead and... <laughs> For any of your rants, comments, or questions, you can go ahead and email us at notasafespacepodcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram. And also some exciting news is that we have finally launched it. Oh, not again. What? I've been I fucking hear... editing for weeks. I can hear you. That's fucking hilarious. Okay. Are we back? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and close this up, Sabrina. No, do it. You were uh, just start off with some exciting news. Oh, so some exciting news, guys. Um, we are ready for you guys to start listening on um, our account on Podomatic. So it's not a safe space podcast.podomatic.com. You can listen to all our episodes. And we are also on Patreon if you want to join. It's $2.99 a month, and you actually get to watch all our videos and get to see all our stupid facial expressions and see all the crazy shit we're doing behind the scenes. By the way, I record this podcast in my closet. Literally, <laughs> in my closet. <laughs> that does not mean I am in my closet. <laughs> Thanks for the clarification. So... As always, thanks for listening. It's been a fun time, and we will talk to you guys next time. Have a good night, guys.